Hello and welcome back to Nowhere Fast Garage and another update on the Camaro here. So just wanted to catch you guys up on my plan, my ever-changing plans for this car. So anyway, this car has the original L69, which is a 305 HO motor. It's running pretty good. Um, But, you know, as always, looking for a little more power, make it a little bit more fun to drive. I mean, it's definitely, compared to the old 307, I don't know if they call this an HO. I know it's upgraded in the 442. It's not the same 307 you would get in a regular standard Cutlass or station wagon or whatever. There are a little bit of upgrades on here, but you drive this car and you drive this car, and this car feels way more powerful. I think this is rated at 180. This is 190, but they definitely, you know, for 84, they did some pretty nice upgrades on the 305. I believe it has 9.5 to one compression, which was unheard of at the time. I mean, coming out of the 70s and the early 80s, everything was low compression, eight to one, eight and a half to one, if you're lucky. They did put a little bit of a higher lift cam in these just to give it more power over the standard 305, which was, I believe, 150 horsepower. So pretty significant upgrade, up to 190 uh, horsepower with 240 pounds of torque. And it's like I said, it's running really pretty good. There's really no reason to remove it other than I'm just really looking for like a little project, a little upgrade on the Camaro, make it a little bit more fun. So anyway, the original plan was I had bought an Edelbrock EPS intake manifold, which is a step up from the regular performer, but not quite doesn't quite flow as well as the RPM uh, performer RPM intake and it's really suited to more of a stock engine setup which this car is and it's got the Holly 1850 carburetor I believe it's a 600 CFM manual choke runs pretty good probably needs a rebuild but really not bad at all as it is it does get terrible fuel economy this car burns through gas like crazy even with the overdrive transmission the 700 R4 so it's got the original ECM hooked up, which, you know, when you don't have the factory carburetor, it throws some codes and there's really no need for all this smog stuff anymore because they don't check it. Even in New York state, it's exempt from admissions check, safety only inspection on these. So I wanted to just declutter all this, remove all the, the air injection and all these extra vacuum lines and tubes and stuff give it like a nicer look intake manifold and i also got a standalone hei distributor from summit racing which was affordable i believe it was 99 dollars. so that was the plan just to do a little mild upgrade on here with the intake and the distributor and you know that probably would have given a bit of a improvement seat of the pants feel uh, but then, you know, I'm starting to look for upgrades. I'm like, ah, oh, what if I do a cam? What if I do heads? And of course, you know, when you look this stuff up on the, the groups, the social media groups or the internet, you know, all you hear about is uh, 305s are trash. You know, if you're going to spend money. It's pointless. You might as well do it on a 350, which does make sense. They're pretty plentiful and relatively cheap, a lot of them. Although some people still want a fortune for them, which I don't get. Uh, you know, so many people are just ditching them to do their LS swaps. So, you know, like there's kind of a lot, a lot of them around. So anyway, uh, found this one on Facebook Marketplace, like 20, 15, 20 minutes from my house. It's, it's a 1990 L98, which is a Corvette engine. It's from a 1990 Corvette. Uh, it comes with the aluminum heads from the factory. See, it's still got the Corvette valve covers on it. Uh, different Corvette water pump, which I'm not going to be able to use because the outlets of the for the hoses don't line up with the Camaro. And, yeah, it's just completely different. So I'll probably just use the Camaro water pump because it seems fine. And it's got this funky oil situation going on here. I guess there was an oil cooler. So it's coming out of the block, and also there's another tube that goes around to the other side, 
which I'm guessing is connected to an external oil cooler somewhere. I'm not really sure. I'm not familiar with that era of Corvettes or any era really too much. So hopefully once I get the filter off, uh, this can just come off because I'm not going to be using that. I'll just put a conventional filter on there and just block this off. But, I mean, it looks in pretty good shape. Um, you know, it was missing a couple of things, like a head bolt and uh, a rocker arm on this cylinder, which is strange. And for the pu this side has all the push rods. The other side, the push rods are out, and the guy had four of them. He never allegedly ran this engine. He also bought it used off someone else, so he doesn't really know too much about it. Allegedly, it has 48,000 miles, but course absolutely no way to verify that other than hearsay word of mouth so another thing i just wanted to address real quick was the inevitable questions are probably going to be like oh man why are you doing this why don't you just get an ls they're so much better that's probably true but um it's just a lot of things you got to change when you switch over to a an ls style motor in one of these you just got to start getting different engine mount brackets accessory brackets uh the car came carbureted, so I would need an electric fuel pump set up. Uh, dropping the tank on these is a nightmare. Adding an external pump's an option, but they're noisy and annoying, and it's just gonna be a street car, just a cruiser. It's not gonna be a race car. I'm not trying to beat anybody. And I have very limited time between you know, work and the house and the kids and everything to really invest a lot of time into something like that to make it really right. Um, I'm not ruling it out. Maybe one day it'll happen on this car or a different car. I don't know. But for now, just getting this Corvette engine, even though it's completely outdated and obsolete, it's going to give me extra torque. It's going to make it more fun to drive. And I could really, if, if it's in good shape, I could really just throw it in as it is. And the whole deal might cost me like when everything all said and done, like six, seven hundred dollars and to gain you know, over 100 pounds of torque and probably 60 horsepower. Um, you know, not a bad deal. So that's why I'm doing it this way. And uh, we'll see what happens with the Cutlass. I had always thought about doing an LS deal in the Cutlass, maybe even with a turbo. But um, that, like I said, that's going to be a lot more time consuming, a lot more money, a lot more work. So that is... That car's on the back burner for now. It runs pretty good the way it is. So we're just gonna leave that one for now and just deal with some cosmetic issues on it, like the peeling paint and the rust. And uh, yeah, we'll just do this on the Camaro. The Camaro cosmetically is pretty good. All it really needs is, to make it really nice, I think, is a new rug inside the carpet. It's pretty beat, uh, new headliner. And, you know, maybe some new T-top seals because they do leak a little, but, you know, it's pretty nice the way it is. Maybe uh, just get like a, an original stripe kit or something I think would be pretty cool. Also want to get the AC working. So I'm just trying to clean everything up a little bit. These were caked with uh, some oil, like some dried up oil residue. So wiped them down with some lacquer thinner. And this, you know, looks like it was sitting for a while with no intake. So it's a little dusty and dirty in here. Just want to clean it up a little bit. Gonna take this hold down bracket off.
not too terrible. Just a few pieces of debris. Actually not bad at all in here. Just, you know, like I said, sitting open in a garage with the dust and everything getting in here. Mixing with the residue of oil that was in here. It's interesting to me how they covered the intake ports, but they left this whole valley wide open. All right, so that's the first step in cleaning done for now. Wiped everything down, got the remaining room temperature vulcanization off and vacuumed out the particles. I did take out and look at all of these roller lifters and they seem fine. Um, so yeah, just clean it up a little bit and we'll wrap this up for now. So anyway, that's going to be it for today. Next time, we're going to hope to get all the missing pieces back on the L98-350 uh, so we can do our leak down test, see how things are looking. So anyway, thanks for watching and see you next time.